today is a remarkable day, and it's not just because it's April 1, All Fool's Day. In fact, to the contrary, I think it's a historic occasion in the sense that we are privileging, we are bringing to the forefront the role of the artist in society as a healer, as part of the transformational process. You know, there's been a lot of talk about reparations, but for me what stands out is a little commentary by Earl Lovelace, who puts it this way, he speaks of psychical repair, and he says in repairing the psyche, whether you be European, whether you be Black Caribbean, whether you be Indian Caribbean, whether you be Chinese Caribbean, wherever you are globally, it's all about reconstruction of the psyche. And he places an artist in a central position where that is concerned. Mm -hmm. So this evening, all hail the artists. Uh -huh. So wherever you're from, whether it be the diplomatic community, the academic community, the community as a whole, welcome. The pleasure is mine at this time to call on Mr. Keith Wade. Who will be doing the invocation? And after Mr. Keith Wade, we're going to have none other but Professor Griffith, our own, who has been at the forefront of this move, to give us some remarks this evening. Pleasure is mine to invite Professor Griffith, our Vice Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Who 
So Keith Wade has 100 pounds sterling in his pocket. <laughs> He's going to give 100 pounds to everyone in the last three rows who comes forward. <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh. <laughs> One of the things I realized, having returned to Guyana last June, is that one of the sad realities of our society is that there has been a decline in the arts, in the music, in the support for painting, support for sculpture, support for the visual and the performing arts. And I decided that I will, in my own small way, support and promote the art. And so, my wife and I decided that although she is not here with me, we will use this house, which we now have been calling Renaissance House, to do precisely that. And so I approached Mr. Gavidar and said, why don't we take some of the art of our students and our lecturers that have been just languishing? Why don't we frame pieces? Why don't we get some sculpture that maybe we cannot own because they're done by famous people? But at least we can showcase and find ways to celebrate the arts, to celebrate the students and the lecturers and the artists together. And so I thought, why don't we do a combination package that allows the arts, vision, and performing in a variety of respects to be showcased. And we've been wanting to do this since last semester. And we thought, why don't we use the occasion of the Wade's presence to do the inaugural? And so I want to thank you for coming to this inaugural painting, music, and poetry. And we're going to find an opportunity every five or six months to bring a different set of work. Later on, we get a chance to get a tour. I think we have on this play, Mr. Gatidar, about 40 pieces, lecturers and students. I want you to be able to see. I'd like to have the students appreciate that their work is valued, not just taken and left someplace, but the appreciation of their value. And so I want to thank the students and others who have agreed to be part of this program. I want to thank Mr. Kuwait, our distinguished visiting artists and residents. I want to thank Professor Paloma Mohammed and her team for helping to pull this all together. This is number one. It is the alpha, but it is not the omega. <laughs> The next person who is going to be visiting us, going to be connecting with us, who is going to be a part of the process of his healing, Gentia Miller, is someone that I'm so proud to know in that she is, proud to say it, my head of the department, she's an artist. I think one of the most fitting commentaries that I got from the students is that he said, did you know that Miss Miller can sing? Yeah. Sometimes when she comes to lecture to us, oh, you hear this woman sing. Now, I've never heard her sing, but what I do know is that she's a remarkable poet. So I can say this much. We're about to experience the voice of a poet, a singer, the voice of a literary critic, a lecturer, and an amazing as we are. Thank you very much, Mr. Dean. It's such an introduction, I should be all nervous, right? <laughs> I love poetry, I write poetry, I teach poetry. Um, yeah. Students, they, they take some of the stories from science and class. <laughs> I really love teaching, and if I find that, uh, and it helps, you know, get them motivated. Thank you. I want to do three poems this evening. And these are poems that came to me and um, they're specific to the place. Poem number one is located in Guyana. 
and it's it recaptures to my experience in my family. Plan number two is going to take all of us to the United States New Mexico. I read their green research and I was checking for a bone for me. And the third one is going to bring us back to the end. It's called Haiku Falls. <laughs>
sure. Pause. Let's 
the first one I'll be doing is entitled Sensitivity. Uh, Sensitive was basically written off the influence of Michael Jackson's song with uh, what's the name? Rock. <laughs> With participation of that song, um, I just thought to myself, hey, maybe I could try this. And I did it so upon love and made it a person and how it has how it influences everything that I do in my life. So this is sense. I get coffee on the hottest days. Someone tell the sun to up her rays, to calm the storm in my soul. What made I'm young to next I'm old. I'm a bad influence to myself. Way too emotional to maintain the health. You leave me lost in a daze, fogged up for days. Moonlight just right like this type of feeling will come with some sentimental praise. Twisted and confused, what is there left to do? The pain in my system is making me numb in the brain. And I'm drifting away. I'm drifting away. I'm drifting away slowly, pull me in, just hold me. How could your bitterness be so sweet? Only you get me, fully understand me, set me at ease. With a taste of the flavor of you on my lips, I stay available for you to love me. Is it stupid? Am I desperate? Or just a definition of lonely? Bartender, what you selling? I'ma need a quick fix of a nightcap, please. Cause your cathedrals have got my demons feeling all tingly inside. I guess that the feed burst of the preaching of the blues playing on rewind. And it's a rebel like Sunday, with a smoky kind of air. And this is a rather muffin just needs a new soul. Because <laughs> 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 this is a rather muffin just needs a new soul. <laughs> it's a rebel like Sunday, with a smoky kind of air. And the poison in my body's got me feeling some kind of way. Because I ain't no saint. Unless you think of a saint as a sinner who keeps on trying. These words of Madiba, seek a new keeper for this existence tonight. And out of all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. On the road to recovery, being in love makes you boy poetry. So creative with a whole lot of you consumed in me. Red eye vision, it's all give and take. You, what a wonderful escape. I find a sensitive freedom within your paradise gates. And I'm drifting away, I'm drifting away. I, 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 I'm drifting away. So the next one is entitled Black Castle, and it was written a while ago and I didn't hardly ever perform it, but this is a, uh, a personal view on how I see how uh, black persons and black youths are within the arts and in society, and a beautiful message to black women. We moved from royalty, respected hierarchy, brainwashed through centuries, brothers sagging their pants below their knees, young sisters short skirts, high heels below 16, but bigger than her dreams. Who's to blame? How could this be? Black people in black holes misplaced identities. If you can find a way out, then stay out. Cause they're no longer sh shackling our ankles, they're lynching our dreams. Black people, please, take control over your destiny. Because the way they got us pinned out, it's going to be a different lifetime before black me can honor praise in the industry without affiliation to the Illuminati. No matter how free we become mentally, reality is they'll always have us enslaved, restricted, big chains. If we don't break away, I take a stand today. And my women, there's no beauty in degrading the value of your essence. Uphold your independence and know that your strength doesn't derive from the brother man. Embrace the comfort of your skin, whether caramel light, dark chocolate supreme, or just the average cocoa brown tea. Black children, look in the mirror. You are the reflection of divinity. Don't let them fool you with selective memory, quote unquote. From the nappy follicles to your, to your toes, own your existence. And oh no, I don't mean to come off cold. I'm just speaking the reality we choose to ignore. Really not trying to get political, but we're embracing too much of the whiplash. While the moon illuminates the room, we consume no freedom in this doom. Mind made black castles. And 
And my final piece is actually a song. Uh, <laughs> you can check it out on uh, YouTube or SoundCloud. Atatasia, that's A T A Y J H. It's uh, my entitled Metamorphosis. This is my first single. Uh, it was released on May 5th, 2014. <laughs> so this year is going to be five years since it's been out. I was, you know, quite honored to have it be number one on the local charts for about uh, three weeks. And yes, it's just <laughs> so. This is this was my entry into the world of poetry and music, and. It explained my evolution and what I entitled my metamorphosis as an artist and an individual. So here it goes. Am I a product of my age? Or just a young rebel misunderstood for years? Never had a strong grip on luck, not so lucid fate, shifting in and out of the place. Misplaced in a world of timid love and so much roaring hate. My memories deteriorating because of the urbanness in my mind. Lately I feel myself shifting, my focus shifting sometimes. I can have such a sick pride. I swear my ego has an ego that seems moving no direction. My trust, my trust is tarnished, so don't expect to be getting none. See, my entourage moves big, but my circles keep small. Too many ships are sunk in my life, so I'm rethinking on relations or even making friends at all. Fading veins, palms are numb, another misfit kid trying to fit in. Be yourself, that's what they're yelling. The moment you step out and be loud, they're regretting and judging, breaking you down. Spitting a curse into my generation so much the chaos in this crisis, identities fall. I can feel my skin shortening like it's barely fitting. As pulsating, body shaking, mirrors in this world. I don't believe my reflection. I'm shocked with hesitation like, oh la, who have I become? In life, Everyone is born with white wings and lives life with rich hearts and blinking horns and expect to die with untrashed halos. I speak with emotions and they are times I overreact. We all wear the face of mass and hypocrites of our words, deceivers of our actions. The moment life traps us is when we believe our own lies. Our dreams become lynched because they were shackled to our fears. There's too much truth in my speech. Your subconscious just told me. I'm a writer for a poet by affiliation and a musician by experiment. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of who I've become. Ain't no mistake that this music has made me create what has yet to be nothing more than magnificent. So yeah, when my thoughts hit me, reminiscing the journey from the old to the new me, it's no longer a question but a statement. Just look at this, just look at me, just look at who I've become. So if you're feeling weary, like it's time to give up, look up, fall to your knees if you must. Cause it's never easy, believe me, just hold faith and trust. The bickering and negativity will fade and motivation steps in and adjust. If it's your dreams, go for it. Make the sacrifice, hold on to it. This is not a testimony, just some beautiful lyrics for you to relate to and feel liberated. Cause when success meets you, we'll be glad that you made it. Please, she deserves more than that. You know, as for me personally, embracing both female subjects, poetry to poetry, I thought of Strodal, the cultural anthropologist, who said in terms of cultural identity, it's not necessarily a state of being state of becoming and that's always in progress. Thank you so very much. Oh. And now put your hands together as we welcome none other than Keith Waite. I'm urging the government to the education department to look at possibilities of us buying this penny whistle for me, but let me, let me just play it before I bring in the rhythm and the drum. And it's very simple. See if you can recognize anything in here that's familiar to you. Right. We all sit there smiling. Let me get you all clapping. So
comfort. Yeah? Mm. Now, look, what's comfort? Does anybody know what's comfort? What is it about? Because it isn't. You have friends? Friends get spiritual? Yeah, you have friends get spiritual. Yes, there we go. the name, one of the persons who left Buxton, traveled across several villages, established village bottom house schools, established cultural groups such as Tutu Shingle in Buxton, the Black Showcase in the Namstel. And when I think of Peter Kempadu, Peter Kempadu was this long haired, very charismatic Indian brother and friend who came to us and said, you know what? We are going to fuse what is truly African with what is Indian. And I remember the Black Showcase doing 
a fortified in those days. Oh yes. Um, it was a kind of fortified, but it was divided between the Black Showcase and an Indian group. And I felt that was so beautiful. And I'm hoping that as a university, speaking to the University of Guyana now, that we take note. And we do not forget names like Kwame Apata and Peter Kempi. Yeah. When we speak of culture, we cannot lose track of what they mean to us. So as we can, can, I, yes. can I just take us a moment of brief to invite the Professor Yes BC to come forward. <laughs> Hand. <laughs> The presentation of my most recent CD, which has all elements which includes Guyana with Love, with all my original compositions, the journeys that I've made, Maya, which is about Indo Guyanese culture, the Indian Olmic Heartbeat, African Sunrise, um, the Hidden Forces Rhythm, that's so important. Begum Love theme, of course, Guyana with Love. And then we end with Scar Beat. And they're all original composition. A little gift to you, sir. Thank you very much. There are going to be more appreciation opportunities later on. <laughs> <laughs> now, could we get the next process is about bringing together the three art forms? Yes. And can, can I get my brother here, who's a wonderful teacher? Artist. Artist. Yeah. Thank you, good night, ladies and gentlemen. This is kind of surprising. <laughs> but, um, we have a whole network going on here. The art form, network, music, literature, art, all going on here. And you know what? It's, it's really, really, I should say, contagious because I see a lot of people who are non artists. And you're here tapping your feet, <laughs> humming along, shaking your head, and so on. So, you know, it is really contagious. Um, I guess we're turning on the, we're adding the A to STEM, Ms. Alexander. Steve, 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 Steve here. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, I always like to take this opportunity to say that, you know what, we are still relevant. The art, the art still relevant. And irrespective of what you call it, STEM or what, STEM, we would like it to be STEM. Um, we have three artists here. Unfortunately, we couldn't have the our key player, that's the one who did the tools over there. Um, incidentally, she's an Adventist, and you know, Saturday is um, hard for um, So we have the three of our students there. Let me see them. They are, oh, please. Um, students. Students, they are painting. They were part of the forum session that we had. The university, we have. Uh, you'll see them. Okay, you'll see them later at four. Okay. They're so engrossed in their, their, their piece. Okay. Yes. Um, you will see them, you'll have a chance to chat to them. But all I'd like to say here is that, um, you know, the, for inspiration, there's so much out there in, in Guyana. Um, you've already talked about going into the rainforest. He himself got the inspiration. And, you know, he brought it out here, and we got the inspiration from him. Yes. So there's so much, so much sort of imagery that you can that you can utilize here in Guyana. I recall some years uh, about a year back, some students from Ohio State University. They were here with Dr. Cambridge, and they were doing their, I think, PhD. And what they were doing, they were doing it the sounds of George, the cars, you know. I mean, things we take for granted, and then they 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 they, they just. Uh, recorded these songs and then they play them back and you'll be surprised to know. Well, you know, we have so much here. We have so much here that we can make things out. Um, we have evidence of here today. Uh, I would just like to thank you for coming out. Um, it's been a long, long time since we've had this type of appreciation regarding uh, talking about visual arts here now. And um, thank you for showing that appreciation. Um, that's it much for the students who are. You'll get the opportunity to interact with them and talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're going to end with a, as we started, not an invocation, but we started with mm -hmm. a folk song. Which one? Sorry, these are 
Yes. No, but like this will get me on the final. All right, so what, what is what is it? It's not going to be fair. No, what again? This one back. So we do on the final. Okay, G. Good. No, we want to keep it within the things you all familiar with. Fire!